تحصيني وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وبالعصيان تأتيني فكيف أجيب يا ويحي ومن ذا سوف يحميني نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فيا عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله Respected brothers in Iman, Ahbab Rasulillah. Having praised Allah and having sent salutation of mercy, exaltation and peace of Allah to descend upon Khairi Khalqi, the best of his creation, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect our hearts as Ummah of Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we love one another for his sake and we don't hate and fight one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to siratul mustaqim and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to live as Muslims, die as Muslims and be resurrected as Muslims in the company, in the best company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi jannatil firdaus al-a'la. I advise you starting by myself that we should fear Allah azza wa jalla for innama yataqabbalullahu min al-muttaqin a promise by Allah a promise from Allah that those who strove those who worked harder to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who aspired and put into practice the acts of taqwa will definitely be accepted in this world in the grave and tomorrow hereafter the unwan of our khutbah is a continuation of last week's khutbah it will be a series insha'Allah we put three topics together. One is taqwa Allah. Number two was tawakkul ala Allah. And then al-yaqeenu, al-yaqeenu billah. And this is righteousness, working righteousness, piety, and then putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with certainty, al-yaqeen. We highlighted some stories and these are called Qasas quran stories of Quran and we yani we chose to go with the story of mother of Musa and we said inshallah we're gonna continue how much mother of Musa believed in Allah and how much she's trusted in Allah and how much she was certain that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true. <coughs> we want to continue. The incident of Musa alayhi salam trying to bring justice between the oppressor and the oppressed led to the death of the oppressor. He hit this person. Musa alayhi salam never intended to kill him. He hit him. And then it happened that he died. So the news is going around. 
and the news has reached the chiefs, the ruling, the leadership, the government of that time. And now they are plotting that Musa alayhi salam has to be put to death. He has to be killed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَخْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسَعَ قَالَ يَا مُوسَى إِنَّ الْمَلَأَ يَأْتَمِرُونَ بِكَ لِيَقْتُلُوكَ فَخْرُجْ إِنِّي لَكَ مِنَ النَّاسِحِينَ The news is out that Musa is the killer. Remember when this incident happened, Musa alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala rabbi inni zhalamtu nafsi faghfir li faghfar lah so he asked Allah for forgiveness he said oh Allah I have wronged myself by hitting this person that led to his death so forgive me oh Allah for that wrongdoing so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him so the news is coming that the chiefs and leadership and the ruling class are plotting and conspiring to kill Musa. So this person is coming from the farthest part of the city. He told him, Fakhruj, I'm advising you to leave Egypt. Inni laka minan nasihin. I am but a, an advisor to you. I'm giving you a sincere advice. If these people find you in Egypt, they, they, they your, your case has been decided, leave. So Musa alayhi salam, is leaving Egypt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبْ Musa alayhi salam left Egypt, but in what state? خَائِفًا In fear, because they are looking for him. But also يَتَرَقَّبْ But he in caution. He left in fear. So, before we continue, في علم التوحيد والعقيدة There is what is called الاتخاذ اتخاذ بالأسباب الأخذ بالأسباب A Muslim does not say that you know I'm a Muslim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-razaq and so I don't need to work Allah is going to provide me no you have to work ah, Allah is al-razaq and he tells you to work Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never told you that yes I'm al-razaq sit down Allah is يعني فعال لما يريد Allah is على كل شيء قدير like in the lazy Muslims who don't want to work, you have to work. Laziness, Al-Kasal, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Allah to protect him from what? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika, part of the dua you say, min al-Kasal. Laziness that you just sit and you have to be fed and you have to be given and you beg around. No, there is no begging in Islam. There is asking, you have to work. And Ambiya and Rasul are the good example. Every Nabi and every Rasul had a mihna. They had a profession, that they, were, that they had something that they were doing. So Musa is leaving, he's very yani, cautious, but at the same time, he's afraid. But as he's leaving, he never said, okay, I'm too smart, I know my way like some of us do. He said, Qala Rabbi, najini minal With all effort that he's making, which route, route am I going to take? He's still raising his hands and making dua, saying, Oh Allah, oh my Lord, save me from the, this wrongdoing. Yani, this wrongdoers. Save me from these oppressors, oh Allah. Anbiya ihtammu bid dua. Anbiya Allahi kanu ihtammuna bid dua. They were giving importance to dua. Li annahum amanu billah wa tawakkalu ala Allah. Wa kathalik. كان عندهم اليقين تيقنوا أن وعد الله حق والله أنبياء believed in Allah and أنبياء relied upon Allah سبحانه وتعالى they never argued with Allah in their hearts like we are arguing they never doubted Allah we make dua but in your heart is it gonna happen or not you wanna make plan ahead of Allah what about if it doesn't happen what am I gonna do sometimes we do not have يقين Sometimes we do not even believe in that dua. You say, let me make, a, make dua and see. Those who are not Anbiya and Rusul, and these are the reasons why our dua are delayed. Because how much do we trust in Allah, and how much do we believe with certainty that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Udu'uni astajib lakum, ask me and I will give you, I will respond to you, I will give you what you ask for, and even better. Musa alayhi salam is asking Allah, 
save me من القوم الظالمين from the people from this community from this oppressing oppressing nation save me from them all so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us ولما توجه تلقاء مديانا when Musa alayhi salam had left Egypt and he took the route of Madian Midian Musa alayhi salam never set out and say I'm going to make it I have my ticket I'm going to travel with American airline no? I know I'm going to reach my destination how do you know it is even sunnah it, according to sharia of Muhammadiyah, sharia which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muhammad that you make dua Subhanallah, he sahara lana hada, wama kunna lahu mukarinin, wa inna ila rabbina lamu kalibun, and the extension of that dua. You make dua. Because you don't save yourself, you don't protect yourself. Who is protecting this heavy thing called the aeroplane? Is it you? Is it the makers? Did they make it out of their own, you know, knowledge, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them knowledge to make that aeroplane? How comes that a heavy aeroplane flies, but a stone cannot fly? You throw it, it has to come down. And stone is lighter than what? An aeroplane. And when, once you fly, who is holding you and protecting you up there? How comes that other aeroplanes crashes? How comes? And how comes that modern 21st century submarine goes deep, deeper to the ocean and they do not return? And bodies and submarine cannot be discovered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Why can't you see the birds? فَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَاتٍ وَيَقْبِضْنُ مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ The birds that are flying. Can't you see how they open their wings and then close? Who is holding them there not to fall down? How many birds with wings flies and then they cannot make it, they fall down? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one ma yumsikuhunna illa rahman No one holds them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam is on his way. He's making dua again. He's in Egypt, ready to leave. Qala rabbi najini min al qawmi zalimi. He has left Egypt. He's on his way to Madian. Qala asa rabbi an yahdiyani sawa as sabir. He say, I believe and I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide me to the right way to reach the right destination. Those are anbiya and dua. That is how closer, and you can see he is making this dua with passion. He's not making this dua with, you know, a demoralized and discouraged heart. No. Some of us are making dua, Ya Allah. You find a Muslim has a problem, but he has to go to, as I said last week, Somebody is still seeking jinn help. Somebody is still seeking, somebody has a problem, but he believes that if he asks Allah directly, it's not going to work. He has to go through the grave of Sheikh so and so. Ya Sheikh, Ya Sheikh. He cannot ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. He has to make tawaf seven times around the qabr. And he say, but it's okay, this is al wasil I say tawaf around the qabr. Tawaf is ibadah that can only be done in one place. Not even in Medina. Tawaf is only done. There is only two places where you can do tawaf. Around Al-Kaaba and also Sa'i by Safa wal Marwa is also called tawaf. Nowhere else you cannot go around any masjid making dua that you are making tawaf. That is not ibadah. Falidhalika brothers, Musa is making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him ila shawa isabi. So Musa alayhi salam is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Madian. He arrived in Madian safely. Allah is accepting his dua. Every step he makes, he is guided and guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَا أَمَدْيَنَا وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِنَ النَّاسِ يَسْكُونَ وَوَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمْ رَأَتَيْنِ تَذُولَانِ when Musa salam arrived in Madian, he arrived at a place where they were drawing water. They had a big well in this village or town where everybody was coming and they were drawing water to water their animals. 
Musa alayhi salam is a stranger. Remember, Musa is a fugitive. Not just a refugee, a fugitive. A refugee says, Alhamdulillah, I've arrived in America. I can settle. A fugitive has a problem because he doesn't even know whether he's going to survive in that America. Maybe there are some spies behind him who were sent to kill him. That is Musa alayhi salam. We are talking about Musa who was raised as a prince in the palace by the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Firaw. From the palatial life, being a prince, and then he has to walk and ride in this jungle. He is in a foreign land. All his leisures and luxuries are gone. He doesn't have job, no comfortable life, no mother, no father, no family, nothing. Nobody knows Musa alayhi salam. Nobody knows Musa alayhi salam. He's arriving in a foreign land, and Musa alayhi salam is arriving at this spot where they are watering their animals. There's a well. What is he doing? A few minutes later, and he is seeing people drawing water and watering their animals. But just on their side, there are two women, two girls, who are holding back. So men are drawing water and they're watering their animals. But these two ladies are standing like they're in a desperate need. They are in a need, but nobody cares about them. I want us to learn something here. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqala fil hadith and many people, every, almost every Muslim knows this hadith. One of the easiest a hadith to understand but I think we did not internalize it. Wa ahibba li nasi ma tuhibbu li nafsika takun muslima and love for others what you love for yourself. Hadith does not go with love for yourself what you love for others. Love. And love for Others, what you love for yourself, then you are a true believer. The ones who implemented that, that hadith is Ansar. Ansar who received Al Muhajirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them and describing them as follows These people prefer the others, they prefer their brothers. If there was something, even though they were in dire need of that thing, but they still preferred it to their brothers to have it first. That is Islam. Greedy. Miserliness. Stinginess is not part of Islam. It's all about you, me, and me, and me. That is not Islam. Falidalika Musa is seeing those girls. I want to ask you a question. These girls are from Madian. These girls, this is their home. They have a home, they have everything. Who is in need of everything here? Musa alayhi salam. He's a stranger, a foreigner, no home, no nothing. He only has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when he saw the need, Musa alayhi salam went to them. He suspended his needs. Musa alayhi salam put aside his needs and he went to those two girls and asked them one question. Qala ma khat bukuma. He asked them, what is your problem? I can see you are in need. I can see you are in need. What is your problem? A big lesson in this statement of Musa alayhi salam. If it is me and you, we, we should have gone to these girls to say, can I talk to you? I'm from, uh, I don't need to tell you, I'm from Egypt. Uh, I was raised in a palace. I really had a good life, not what you are seeing here. I arrived here and now I'm a fugitive. I made an unintended mistake, but I'm here. I have no home, no food. I'm so hungry. I'm so thirsty, right? <laughs> we are dealing with Imaniyat here. We are dealing with Iman. Iman is not a joke. The journey of Iman is not a joke. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us Quran and Sunnah to travel that journey. Physical journey is very easy. Physical journey is very easy. But without Iman, that physical part of you is gone. Do whatever you want to do on earth physically. Your life is only going to end in this world. 
you will have no share in the grave and you will have no share on the day of Qiyah. Musa alayhi salam did not ask those questions. He suspended his need and then he asked them, what is your problem? Yani bimada. He gave importance to their problem. What is your problem? They said, لا نسقي حتى يصدر الرعاء لا نسقي حتى يصدر يصدر الرعاء وأبونا شيخ كبير. We are not able. We are not in a position of watering our animals until when men, these men you see here, have already watered their animals. وأبونا شيخ كبير. Besides, our father is an old man. Our father is an old man. So we have to wait. Yes. We are indeed, but according to the law here, these men, these strong men, have, you know we are just women, and our father is an old man, so we are helpless. Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَقَى لَهُمَا He never asked them, I'm in need, are you going to give me some ten bags? Are you going to give me some hundred bags? La. Are you going to feed me? Can you take me home? Can you give me your name? Can I have your address? La. فَسَقَى لَهُمَا Musa alayhi salam knew that when somebody is in need, you have to fulfill his need. So Musa alayhi salam is drawing water and he is watering their animals and they are living without Musa telling them his problems, without Musa asking them for any favor, without Musa asking them, what are your names? Do you know what he did after that? He was in a position of asking. He was in a position of presenting his case, especially having helped these girls. He would have told them now, maybe you know that I'm a kind person, right? Could you please, Yani, listen to me, whether you're going to help me or not? Musa, alayhi salam, went beyond humans. He knew that al-Razaq huwa Allah, al-Mu'ti huwa Allah, al-Wahhab huwa Allah, al-Mannan huwa Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu nas oh mankind, Oh man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fatir, هَلْ مِنْ خَالِقٍ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ فَأَنَّا تُفَكُونَ Is there any creator other than Allah who provides you from the heavens and earth? None has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأَنَّا تُفَكُونَ Coming to, towards the end of this, Musa alayhi salam having helped them, he never told the human his problem. You can see from, e from Egypt, he's saying, Rabbi najini min al You can see on his way, he say, Asa Rabbi an yahdiyani ila sawa sabil. Musa alayhi salam is arriving seeing people. In fact, he went beyond his way and helped and served the ummah. He's serving the ummah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thumma tawalla, tawalla ila dhil. Tawalla ila dhil. Then Musa alayhi salam returned and he sat under a shade. As he's sitting under the shade, knowing that the giver is only Allah, the provider is only Allah, the protector is only Allah, the only one who can save you from distress and anxiety and tough situation is only Allah. He cried, he said, Musa is raising his hands and saying, Rabbi, oh my Lord, Lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. Ya Allah, I asked you when I was starting my journey, before I start my journey to forgive me. And I know that you forgave me. That was the yaqeen of Anbiya. Ya Allah, I left everything good, everything so-called good of dunya behind in the palace. I had to leave. And I asked you to guide me, Ya Allah. You have guided me safe here. Ya Allah. I have another dua, Rabbi, oh my Lord, Lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. I am de desperately in need of any khayr, anything that you want to bestow on me, Ya Allah, I'm in need of it and I will receive it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, this is missing in us today. This is missing in us today. We make dua and then we try other things. We make dua and then we leave dua. We make dua and then we give up. We make dua and we doubt whether that dua is going to be accepted. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and I will conclude with this dua, then we're going to continue, inshallah, next week if we are alive. What happened to Musa 
between Asr and Maghrib after making that dua. Allahu Akbar. Believing in Allah, having taqwa from Allah, at tawakkul ala Allah, putting your trust in Allah, and having yaqeen without doubting the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, hadith is mutafakun alayhi, rawahu Abu Hurayr radiyallahu anhum, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yazalu yustajabu lil abdi, ما لم يدعو بإثم أو قطيعة رحم ما لم يستعجل. That a dua of a Muslim, a dua of a person, will continue to be accepted by Allah on condition that he does not do three things. Yani your dua will be accepted anytime, anywhere, on condition that you do not do these three things. The first one, ما لم يدعو بإثم. As long as he does not make a sinful dua. Aw qati ati rahmin. Or he does not make a dua that you see, my father is no longer my father. My brothers are no longer by my brothers. Ya Allah, make them to be away from me. Yes, we were raised young, but now that I have some money, so my brother is not my brother. I don't want you in my house. I don't want you in my life. Many of us are doing that. We were raised together with love eating full and sometimes rose full and sweet. Ah, but me, Akida, we, we, we led a very humble life. Then this one became a doctor, this one became a professor, and then Shaitan entered through. This is my life. I've succeeded. Your dad is not your dad. Your mom is not your mom. Your brothers are not your brothers, and your sisters are not your sisters. You are the boss. You want them to kiss your feet. Most of us are doing that. Some people are in America here. They don't even know what their mothers are, are eating, where they came from. Your mom has to beg you for a hundred dollars, then you have to consult your wife for her to accept, you to accept one hundred dollars. Who made you for your wife is no, if not Allah through your parents. What can you tell your parents? What success do you want? Go to Haji ten times. But if your parents are crying, you will have a tough time on the day of Qiyam. ما رضاه الله إلا برضاء الوالدين وما بقاء الكون إلا بحنن الأبوين فكل من يغضب أما أو أبا يغضب ربه فبذل روح فداهما تجد الخير جزاء. What is this that you are looking for? What blessings and rahma? You are in America. You are enjoying milk and honey. You are enjoying, you know, American dream. You do not know the condition of your family at home. You haven't gone home for so many years. You travel everywhere in the world. You don't know the condition of your mother. You don't know whether today she ate, she had breakfast or not. If you send her a hundred dollars, you ask her, Mommy, I just sent you a hundred dollars last month. What did you do with it? Shaitan al -akhras. You ask a sinful dua that delays your dua. You ask a dua that separates Siva, the family ties, but also Malam Yastag. You do not ask Allah in force, Allah, Ya Allah, I want it now, now. No, don't be in, in, in a hurry. Qila Ya Rasulullah, mal istihja. Rasul was asked, we understand, yani qati'atul rahim. We understand, yani ad-da'wa, an yad'u al-insan bil-ithm. But what do you mean by being in a haste? Qala, yaqulu qad da'awtu wa qad da'awtu, falam ara yastajibu li, fa yastahsiru inda dhalik, fa yada'u al-du'a. This is a person who say, I've been making dua, making dua, but I don't see Allah responding to me. Yani you don't see Allah responding according to you, right? Then he gives up. Then he say, I'm not going to make dua again. You do not do those three things for your dua to be accepted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be minal muttaqeen, wa minal mutawakkileen, but also may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be among those who have yaqeen with the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي صالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة أدى الأمانة نصح الأمة جاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد في الأولين صل وسلم على محمد في الآخرين صل وسلم على محمد في كل وقت وحين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم ارض عن جميع صحابه رسول الله ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار رب ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا اللهم الف بين قلوب المسلمين اللهم الف بين قلوبنا اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اهدنا سبل السلام نجنا من الظلمات الى النور اللهم ارحم موتى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم اهد شباب المسلمين ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما والحمد لله رب العالمين We have a a, a young sheikh for those who have time we have to do this as much as we can he want to talk to you about salah because there are some people who are neglecting their salah we have a young man want to present something very beautiful about salah if you are not in a hurry stay for some 8 to 10 minutes if you are in a hurry you can leave inna allaha ya'muru bil 'adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkar wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun fadhkuru allaha yadhkurkum wad'uhu yastajib lakum wa la dhikrullahi ta'ala akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un wa aqimis salah